You guys ever walk up to the microphone, it's like this, and you're like, oh, wow, I am short. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay, good afternoon. How's everybody doing tonight? Okay, so uh, the bar opens at 5. Some people have um, beer at 3.30. Some people have beer at 4.30. If you know, you know where it is, if you went down there and looked. Um, so you can ask all the questions you want. We'll stay here as long as you want, okay? <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, welcome, my name is Bill Burson, and I'm the moderator for this session, which is Vertical Construction Business Opportunities Part 2. All right, um, again, normal stuff. Note the exits in case of emergency. That way, hallway, left and right. Um, please silence your phones. If you haven't already done that, please do that. Um, and I'd like to thank our sponsors for uh, sponsoring this session and the technical sessions and all of the, the entire conference. Um, remember that we are generating attendance records and that's why you were scanned. If you didn't get scanned when you come in, please get scanned. And our presentations for this session will be available on the SAME SBC website, so you don't need to take pictures unless you really want to. And uh, please remember that, or please note, that this session is being audio recorded. So if you ask a question, um, the guys in the back with the purple vests on that are helping us will get you a microphone. Um, since it's being audio recorded, you probably want to state your company name and your own name. And uh, let me introduce the speakers. So two places that you'll see them in the book. You've got the speakers' names, right? Right here on page... Uh, can't see that, but page 16. And then if you downloaded the app on your phone, it's got their full biography. So I'm not gonna read their full biography, okay? So our speakers today are, um, and this is the order we're going in, uh, Bob Silver, who's uh, Director of Military Construction Programs at uh, Headquarters NAFAC. And then uh, Tom Hodges, who is uh, Chief of Military Construction uh, Mobility Support and Facility Engineering Directorate at AFKEC. And then, uh, and he's not in this, Ed Litvin, who's the uh, Deputy to Assistant Deputy Undersecretary for Health for Admin Ops at the VA. And then Dennis Milston, who is the Associate. No, no, whose phone rang? He has to stay late. <laughs> he has to stay late. Wow. Wow. Playing the first round. Are you guys, uh, yeah. you guys trying to make me feel like I'm a battalion commander again when I used to say things they didn't listen? Golly. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then Dennis Milston, back on Dennis, who's the Associate Executive Director, Office of Construction and Facilities Management Department of Veterans Affairs. So we're going to start with NAFAC, and we'll go right through there. Um, thank you very much. Right. Ed, you're up. I'm sitting down here so I don't fall off. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Silver with NAFAC. It's great to be here. That's all right. For those of you who are not familiar with NAFAC, we are the Naval Facilities Engineering Command. We're a full service cradle to grave infrastructure, engineering, construction, contracting command primarily working for the Navy and the Marine Corps across 100 installations across the world, as well as doing a lot of work for the Air Force and for the Army and other defense agencies, mainly their military construction program. I wanted to mention the full service part of it because we're involved in the planning, we're involved in the design, we're involved in the construction, we're involved in the maintenance, environmental services, all the way through demolition. So there are a lot of small business opportunities beyond vertical construction, beyond construction, beyond design, to have, you know, with NAFAC. And I'll talk about that on our website and how to find those things if you're interested in that. Um, greetings from Rear Admiral John Corka, new Chief of Civil Engineers. He was unable to be here this week. We had a big hurricane in Lejeune recently, Hurricane Florence, and there was a lot going on down there. They got hit, and they got hit really hard. 
talk about that in a little bit as well. But he's a new commander of NAFAC, the chief of civil engineers, and the King Bee of the CBs. Shout out to the CBs here at the conference and in the room tonight. Um, NAFAC is highly committed to supporting small business. We have $8 billion a year in uh, uh, eligible dollars for small business. The Department of Navy gives us a goal of awarding 46% of those $8 billion to small business, and we exceeded that goal once again and awarded 50% or $4 billion to small business across all of our portfolio of work. Um, we hit all of the categories, except we barely missed the women-owned small business, which we're not happy about. It's really rare when we don't, when we don't make them all, but we'll, we'll get that squared away. Please visit our team and booth 1243. We have our headquarters small business director there and some of our small business directors from the regions. And their job, their job in life is to connect small businesses with our work. That's what they do, because we need your help. Today's discussion is going to focus on military construction programs, vertical construction. Um, one of the things our new chief, Ramal Korka, his demand signal, the demand signal he's getting from the warfighters is they need the facilities faster. They need the infrastructure faster. Our projects that we provide are warfighting platforms or they are, pla or they are platforms that enable warfighting capability. And as you hear from the Secretary of Defense, it's very much about delivering lethality quickly and sustaining it. I just get in the brief a little bit. This slide is just really quickly sort of like what the workload has been, what the trends have been. Uh, but I'll give you sort of the quick takeaways. Um, and this is only military construction. Uh, the takeaway is that in FY19, our military construction portfolio is about $3.5 billion. What's not shown there is another one to two billion dollars of SRM or repair work OMEN funded. So there's a lot of other repair work, very large to very small, because we do everything from fixing the window to repairing the roof to an $80 million whole house renovation of a facility, which is a repair project. So there's another part of the portfolio that's not shown there where uh, that's, that might be of interest to folks. But looking beyond this, what's coming down the road, we're anticipating increases in the military construction appropriation for the Navy and Marine Corps going forward. The Navy's going to be making uh, more investments in supporting platforms, weapons platforms, new capabilities, recapping critical infrastructure, particularly for ships, subs, aviation, and training, particularly some shipyard investments through the fit up, which I can't talk too much about right now because it's not, it's not been released. Um, the Marine Corps future investments are continuing investments in their infrastructure reset program and their Force 25, 2025 efforts. I want to mention Marianas Islands and Guam. A rapid expansion of the work there. Uh, for those of you who've been waiting for Guam to get going for years, it's going now. And you'll see a 19 program, and you'll see in future programs, it's really ramping up very quickly. Finally, I'll, I mentioned Hurricane Florence. I don't want to get ahead of the Marine Corps, uh, but NAFAC has been helping them to assess this damage out there at Camp Lejeune, uh, Cherry Point, New River were hit very, very hard. I mentioned at an earlier uh, briefing that I think uh, they'll have somewhere between a few hundred million dollars to maybe a billion or two dollars in repair of Milcon and, uh, and new construct, uh, excuse me, Milcon and repair projects. That might be low, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. We're just now seeing the projects come in at our headquarters and assessing the pricing. I think we've got two weeks to turn it around. I don't know when the work's gonna come out, but I, th we, I think the Marine Corps is going to seek a supplemental appropriation. I'm gonna stop right there. I can't, I don't wanna get ahead of the Marine Corps but there's no omen dollars lying around, there's no extra dollars lying around so they can take and use to repair those facilities. Uh, this slide, really the takeaways are, our workload now and going forward is becoming more and more complex. We were doing a lot of BQs, housing, childcare centers, admin buildings in the past. Now we're really more operational focused, weapon platform focused. Um, they're just more complex, and there's a higher need, an urgent need for operational capability delivered faster. We're, we're, we're big proponents of doing design build. We do a lot of design build, but we are trending now doing more design bid build than design build just because of the nature of the facilities you're doing for the Navy and for the Marine Corps. One thing I'll point out also, uh, again, I've mentioned Marianas. That's sort of like who's got the most work of our regions. 
Marianas used to always be near the bottom, not a whole lot going on out there. It's near the top because it's really expanding rapidly in the workload out there on the military construction side in particular. For those of you keeping score with our org chart, most of you don't, but the uh, changes that NAFAC Southwest and NAFAC Northwest are now under the control, uh, command and control of the Admiral at NAFAC Pacific. They were previously under NAFAC Atlantic, but for better alignment with the Pacific Fleet, whom they support, that's a new sort of command and control alignment structure. These elements here were a lot of the contracting, all the contracting gets done for MILCON, the big repair projects, uh, and, very, and I'll show you the regions in a second. However, at NAFAC Atlantic, our Echelon 3 command at Norfolk, they do all of the MILCON execution and large repair execution for our Europe, Asia, Southwest Asia and Africa command. And there's also a lot of MILCON contracting done at NAFAC Pacific across the Pacific AOR because the workload has been sort of smallish in Far East and Marianas in past years and in Hawaii, so we, we do a lot of centralized execution. But you can find all the workload on our website that I'll talk about in a little bit later. This is sort of a poor attempt to show our commands <laughs> geographically, but uh, NAFAC, URAF, SWA, NAFAC, Washington, the National Capital Region area from Quantico up through Bethesda, Alto Annapolis. Uh, NAFAC, Midland, located in Norfolk, does you know, North Carolina, Lejeune, all through Virginia, up through the Northeast. Um, NAFAC, Southeast, south, Southwest here, Northwest, most of the workload taking place in Puget Sound and then Hawaii, Marianas, and Far East. I'll show you sort of a breakdown of where, what kind of projects are happening in those locations. But I, I do want to give a shout out to the Corps of Engineers. We partner on a lot of things. In Europe, actually at our locations in Bahrain, in the UAE, for example, and in Eastern Europe, we sometimes have jobs. The Corps of Engineers is a design construction agent for us. In Japan, on the, for naval military construction projects, the Corps of Engineers is our design construction agent. We do Army projects overseas and other, like we do all the MILCON in Italy for the Army, for the Air Force, as well as for the Navy. So we work together on a lot of things. Uh, these next few slides are sort of about our website. I don't like these slides. In fact, I decided this week I really hate them. I'm going to ask that they be changed. I'm sorry. But the takeaway from this is here is our NAFAC website to our small business portal, OK? And what I really want to show you is sort of a couple of the key areas and try to steer you away from the ones that are not as helpful. Um, these things here, not helpful, not helpful. This one here, NAFAC military construction forecast is really helpful based on feedback we were getting a number of years ago from construction contractors. We began putting monthly and updating monthly our military construction projects, our large AE, large MAC contract, uh, uh, solicitation dates when they were going to come out because the contractors tell, were telling us, hey, we'll compete, we'll bid on your stuff, we just need to know when it's coming out because uh, the market is so hot, there's so much work, we need to just have some heads up. So we've gotten uh, some good reviews about this, we're trying to keep that up and so that's a really good key thing to look for for military construction and large SRM projects and, other, and the like. Another uh, part of our porthole is regional opportunities. Uh, is really good. Each of those commands I showed you, NAFAC this, NAFAC that, they all have sort of a spot where you can look at and find not only construction contracts, but also the smaller construction contracts, AE contracts, BOF services contracts, will come out on that part right there. And of course, I've heard the subcontracting is pretty good too. What primes got the big contracts? You can look for subcontracting opportunities with those primes. And then of course, FedBizOps is, is key to everyone. That's the real one. These next few slides are, are um, a listing of projects. And I don't want to go too deeply into them for, for time, but um, for the vertical con construction, these are going to list like what, com what uh, region we're talking about, what NAFAC entity here. The, here's your, your ASWA, Europe, Africa, Southwest Asia. And these are the military construction projects in the 19 program and any, pro and any MILCON projects that have not yet been awarded. Uh, what this doesn't include, does not include, and I want to hope change it in the future, as our large SRM projects. There's still a lot of repair projects that's not shown here. But you see a lot of work in Naples. You see Vincenza, Italy, helping the Army, Greece, you know, again, Naples, uh, a lot of stuff going on out there. I will point out that, um, which is the one I wanted to mention, 
Yeah, this one here, Vincenzo, oh, this one, uh, this Mar 4 Ur is actually in Germany. That's sort of a congressional directive there. And this one here, where's the bar locks? That's actually in the UK. So hopefully we'll be able to report those more accurately. Right now we're kind of locked into what was submitted to Congress. Um, next group of uh, Marianas, you can see that again. A couple of years ago, if you looked at Marianas, there would be like two, three projects, maybe one, maybe four. It's really expanding rapidly. And on our horizontal uh, brief that we did earlier, again, there's a lot of horizontal work in Marianas and Guam. And you're just going to see more of that going forward over the next number of fiscal years uh, in support of the Defense Policy Review Initiative. As we re relocate Marines, for the most part, it's a big driving it from Okinawa to the Marianas Islands, particularly Guam, and supporting the Air Force as well. Far East, again, work in Japan, often Diego Garcia, the J Iwakuni Japan, Iwakuni Japan, again, ok uh, Okinawa, Japan. Uh, the Corps of Engineers will be doing the contracting and the de design construction awards for us there. Uh, our, our location, Hawaii, a lot of Pearl Harbor work, a lot of uh, Marine Corps Base, Kaneohe Bay. Great place to, to work. Uh, Mid-Atlantic and Norfolk, that big part of the Northeast and the Midland has a lot of work. We actually have two slides for them. But there's a lot going on at the shipyards. There's a lot going on for the Marine Corps Base because they've got Camp Lejeune, you know, uh, the Tidewater region. Uh, you'll see Cherry Point there, but there's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of work, a lot of big work going on at this location. Southeast, going a little bit farther down. Again, a lot of work there. We've got two slides for Southeast, and these will be available on, on the website. You can look at these projects. You'll see we're supporting the Air Force at Keesler and Shaw, uh, some of our work for them and other, and other locations. Again, I won't get into the details for uh, I want to mention Guantanamo Bay. We've got a couple projects there. We've got a big uh, 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 trash site or a, a, a dump that we've got to do out there, very expensive. And NAFAC Southwest on the West Coast and the desert where the Marines are, a lot of work out there. Usually, these guys are usually doing about a billion dollars a year by themselves at Southwest, just in Milcon, again, aside, at the Army, at the Air Force, a couple of Air Force bases, but really uh, the Marine Corps in the desert and the Navy on the coast, more projects there. Um, Washington, D.C. has got a lot going, a lot of work at Andrews Air Force Base, Bethesda, got a lot of work at Bethesda coming up, hospital work, some, some good size stuff. So we need a lot of help, and we're really glad to be here this week, um, drumming up interest, we're not gonna solve this, without your help. And one of the, thing that, uh, one of the things that Admiral uh, Corca has challenged us with, as other leaders have, is in delivering that, that infrastructure in those facilities faster, is we gotta do business differently. We gotta make it easier for you to go faster because our supportive commanders and our warfighters want it faster. So we're looking for ideas. If there's anything that you guys have that you wanna uh, uh, mention or come talk about or you know, raise, we're, we're all ears. My boss, the chief engineer, uh, Mr. Gott, and the Corps of Engineers Executive Director are working with Congressional Committee staff members to try to change some of the rules that slow things down, that slow money down, that slow authorities down, trying to look for opportunities to change perhaps the FAR, the DFAR with, with, with Ms. Reed Al, who's working here this week, but trying to change the game because uh, there's a bit, there's way too much friction in the current status quo. But thanks very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. <clears throat> And we're just going to go right through. I'm not going to come up here each time, but I did this time. But we're just going to go right on through, and the guys will just step in between each other. So we know that all y'all can think about probably is Bourbon Street. So we'll try to not extend you out too long today. So my name is Tom Hodges from the Air Force Civil Engineer Center, or AFKEC, not to be confused with AFLAC. So we are not that commercial. So, um, so we centrally manage all the Air Force's design and construction portfolio. Uh, there at AFCEC, uh, centralized in San Antonio, Texas. So I want to give you an overview of our, two of our larger portfolios, which are the MILCON, or military construction, those appropriated and authorized by Congress, and our FSRM program. Uh, so the MILCON program, we get about a billion and a half uh, every year of uh, new starts, new construction uh, that we start. And for FSRM, it's about two billion a year that we push money out. I'll kind of go into, a lot of that's executed by bases, uh, but I'll kind of cover that in a few slides coming up. 
So again, um, as I was you heard on from General uh, Seminar on the first day, you know we don't build the Air Force, we don't build strip malls. Maybe one every now and then for a NAF uh, <coughs> services project. But we, we're the ones responsible for ensuring we have the platforms bec uh, for the Air Force to combat for air, space, and cyberspace. Uh, we're, we're, we have the land-based aircraft carriers for the, for, uh, similar to the Navy. So we project our power from the Air Force from those installations. So we're responsible for making sure they're maintained and all, have all the, the new construction to meet the requirements for new, new aircraft and all the new acquisitions coming along. So on the Milcon side, while we in uh, AFCAC are the design and construction managers, we manage the, the users, the programs, the projects. We, for the majority of our the actual design and construction work, our, we use our agents, where the Corps of Engineers or NAFAC. Um, so they, they're the ones primarily using their contracts. They do the, the execution on those contract vehicles for the, both the design and the construction. Uh, Ourselves for AFCAC, we do in the United Kingdom. We are the agents uh, in, for that island there. So, and there's a, every now and then occasionally we'll uh, execute a, a Milcon project uh, through our internal uh, AFCAC in-house uh, staff, uh, as long as the NAFAC or, or, or Corps of Engineers allow us to do it. Usually it's the projects they don't want to touch, they allow us to do it, so, which is not very many. So um, you heard on the first day about, and, and Bob mentioned, uh, you know, we're challenged uh, at, with uh, delivering faster, better, cheaper. So to give you kind of a couple examples, I have two slides here uh, of our unawarded FY18 Milcon projects that we're, they're in the stages, we're trying to get those out for advertisement. Uh, so about, we executed really this past year a little over 30% of our program. A lot of reasons why that we didn't get to some of those projects. Um, but we're always looking for help and advice and ideas, uh, both challenging our agents uh, and our uh, partners in design and construction industry to help us to deliver these faster. Uh, the yellow highlights um, are just highlighted for those that are more horizontal construction uh, versus the rest being vertical. So you can see those projects. Uh, if they're not on the street now, you see them, we'll be watching for them. We hope they're out on the street soon. So uh, you can, as you can see, it's a variety of bases uh, around the world. Second slide. Um, again, we're looking to execute these. We get these executed this year um, so we can move out and deliver because a lot of these cases, we have emissions that are waiting for these facilities. So uh, we don't have the luxury. It's not like a, like a dorm or a child development center where they can just stay in their existing facility longer. It's uh, in some cases for new aircraft. We have new aircraft coming and there's no place to put them. So we have to make sure we execute these on time. Uh, now for our FY19 program, got a couple of slides here. So these are all, we've, we, some of these we've actually already advertised, so we're uh, trying to increase our percentage this year uh, to a much greater than 30%, uh, so we can get the, many of these executed on time as possible. Again, you'll notice um, some key uh, first words of some of those uh, titles, F-35, KC-46, MQ-9, as some of our new acquisition mission um, that we have, again, aircraft coming that we have to, they're dependent on us to execute these uh, projects, so. Uh, second slide, again, uh, the yellow are the horizontal construction, the rest are vertical type. See around the world, everywhere from Lake and Heath to Osan, uh, Europe, across the U.S. Uh, we have other projects in Europe that are not on here. Uh, there's some other movement in Europe and Eastern Europe that uh, those projects through the, through the core were executing. So again, you'll, you have these slides, so you, know, you have these for future reference, be watching for these. So um, as I mentioned, you know, in the past, years ago, we used to have more dorms, CDCs, uh, just you know, replacing a control tower here and there. A lot of new uh, current mission that we were replacing. Um, now, the majority of our work, uh, just a very small part of our work is uh, replacing current mission, existing mission facilities. Uh, the rest of it is programs like KC-46, F-35, uh, and you can see for both of those, the green checks are two bases we've uh, completed construction on. They're waiting for the aircraft. We're in the middle of uh, construction at Tinker uh, for the KC-46, and we just awarded about six projects at McGuire, uh, in JBMDL uh, in New Jersey. Um, we have a few more to go. And we, Travis, we awarded one, and we have uh, another one that's uh, advertising right now. Uh, and we have uh, about four or five more projects coming up uh, that we just got authority on to start design. So uh, those are for our, again, for our tankers, refuelers, uh, East Coast and West Coast. I don't have them here. We'll have a couple more bases uh, in the future. Some of those may be uh, Oconus. So uh, we're in the early planning stages on some of those. So 
F-35, you can see where we've already completed the majority of the construction. We still have a little bit left um, at Luke, a couple that are about to advertise uh, that some of the remaining squadrons coming into Luke. Uh, Nellis is uh, about complete um, as far as new uh, constructions to advertise and as well as Hill. Uh, right now, of course, our big efforts on the F-35 are Isleson uh, in Alaska and uh, Lake and Heath coming up in the UK. So big opportunities there in those locations. Uh, I mean, Isleson, a lot of those are awarded, but there's still some left. Uh, and then UK is in the early stages, right? Other big programs, um, you might have seen tweets from the, from the Secretary of the Air Force uh, announcing B-21 program. That's a new bomber replacement. So you can see the candidate bases. Uh, there will be a NEPA decision on where the first one will be located. Uh, but those are the efforts we're looking at those uh, installations now as to what opportunities we have there uh, to, uh, to house uh, those missions and those bombers. So it's going to be a big effort there. MQ-9, that's some of the UAVs. That's another, another generation. So we're looking at uh, doing some planning now, some of those facilities. Have, actually have some av advertised at a couple of locations already. Uh, we've got a new helicopter coming. Uh, that was recently, uh, there was uh, some news out on that. And then the new trainer that was uh, just uh, announced that was awarded there. So you can see those locations where those will be going uh, from our upcoming work. Uh, I don't have listed on here another one. So, I mean, we do have a program in the early planning stages for the uh, replacing the Minuteman missiles. So it's going to be a lot of work in the missile fields coming up. Oops. Okay. Well, press the wrong button. I'd like to ask uh, Dave McCormick to come up here and help me. I think I hit the one below it. Yeah. You're an expert, I think. I got it. Okay. Sorry about that. Fast forward here. Bob, you want me to redo your slides? No, thank you. Okay. Okay, not only new bed downs, but we do have some large recapitalization projects um, that we've gotten uh, direction from uh, Secretary of the Air Force to pursue. So uh, some weapon storage facilities, you can see the location. Those are some large projects, uh, over a billion dollars worth of those storage facilities. It's more than a warehouse. Uh, so I mean, our basic military training campuses, uh, they're in Joint Base, Joint Base San Antonio, they're replacing a lot of the new dorms for the new airmen coming into the Air Force. Uh, MIT Lincoln Lab, so this is, we don't build many microchip laboratories uh, in the Air Force, like none. So this is, we got a couple of one-of-a-kind facilities that MIT operates. Um, and luckily, some, some of us uh, are not as smart as MIT, but we try to build facilities that will meet their requirements uh, with clean rooms and such. So have a couple of large programs there. Not advertised yet, but I will put a plug in with our New England district partners. There will be an industry day coming up uh, the, about the first or second week of December up in the Boston area at, for Hanscom Air Force Base. So be watching that if you're interested in constructing some microchip uh, labs. And then in Korea, we have some large project there for our air and space ops. Uh, some other large initiatives in the Pacific. Uh, so our Asia Pacific Resiliency, a lot of projects uh, in the, the planning and design stages for there out in Australia. Uh, and then, again, I only mentioned Spang Dalam on this one. There's a lot of work for the European infrastructure consolidation. So a lot of opportunities there as well. Uh, the other part of our portfolio is the facility sustainment, sustainment restoration and uh, modernization, O&M funds. We have a long name for it in the Air Force. So, so again, we centrally manage those funds at AFCEC. Um, while we don't execute all of it, uh, I'll have a slide here in a minute. Uh, the, half of it goes out to the bases, and the bases are using some of their contracts. They may use, may be using the Corps of Engineers or an AFAC, or they may use, be using some AFCIT contracts, but decentralized, and they're using through their contracting. So kind of show you some of the opportunities we have there. So yeah, so here's a breakout for FY19. 1,429 projects out there at all the installations of the Air Force at uh, $2.5 billion. So a lot of opportunities. You can see installation, half of that, uh, the bases will execute themselves. Uh, we do, AFCA executes about a quarter of that, and the other quarter goes to, uh, to USACE with uh, some in AFAC as well. So uh, in a couple of slides, I've got coming up the projects I'll list that AFCA executes in FY19. If you will go to this website, uh, you'll, you'll be able to go down to that large circle in the lower left-hand corner and there will be a, something called the FY19 CTO. There we have a list of all the projects. I'd have had about 11 slides if I'd have put them on, on slides and 
Y'all don't want to see all of those, but there's where you can go. You can see the names of the projects, um, their authorized amount, uh, and the who is executing those, whether it's the installation themselves, or the AFCAC is executing it, or the USACE or NAFAC is executing it. So go there. It's open to the public, so you can go there and, and see what projects, uh, opportunities for FY19 that we're working on. Again, our projects are advertised in FedBizOps as well. Just kind of have that plug in there. Uh, so for the AFCEC executed projects, here's our design uh, portfolio for FY19 that we are executing with our AFCEC contracts in-house. Uh, so of course these are design, every design project turns into a construction. So uh, if you're waiting for the construction, be watching the, as soon as we get these designed. The yellow again are horizontal. We have uh, more airfield work uh, going on right now. Um, and, and then we have the rest of the construction, uh, vertical construction. And then as far as the construction, uh, that will be advertised in 19. Uh, here's a list here of projects. So we're always looking for help. You know, we're looking for as much interest as possible in, in uh, bidding on these projects. So, um, you know, to help us execute our portfolio in the Cross Air Force. Again, go to that website and you'll find all the stuff that NAVFAC and the Corps of Engineers is executing for it, as well as the bases. Of course, those bases, you'll need, you can contact those installations uh, and you can find out the opportunities there and uh, work with those folks. So uh, I did have two slides in here, our public affairs, at moment to add them, thought maybe not this time. I have a Tyndall before and after. So similar to what Bob was talking about with Camp Lejeune, so as you're all aware, Panama City, we had the Hurricane Michael just went through there a few weeks ago. So there's gonna be a lot of opportunity there. Um, that'll probably be a combination. We're not sure the extent of it and what will be, how much will be rebuilt and, and new construction, but uh, just be watching. I know AFCEC, there'll be opportunities at AFCEC contracting as well as the Corps of Engineers. So South Atlantic Division Mobile District is the agent for the Tyndall area. So they'll be handling a lot, a lot of the new construction. They're already helping us on the ground there uh, right now. So that's where those opportunities will be. Okay. That's just for your information. I'm not going to go through that. Okay. Now to the VA. Good afternoon. <clears throat> I'm Ed Litvin from... Uh, Veterans Health Administration, uh, one of three administrations with the with the VA. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm, with the Veterans Health Administration. Uh, we're all the medical centers across the country. Uh, we we execute and program uh, the bulk of our vertical construction under 50 million. So I'll be talking to you about uh, our opportunities in in those programs. And my partner in crime, Dennis Milston, will be uh, uh, following uh, talking about uh, our construction for the department, including VHA. Uh, over 50 million in vertical construction. So what I wanted to touch on a little bit, uh, tell you a little bit about the VA and our organization, uh, specifically uh, uh, VHA and our capital portfolio. Uh, then talk, get into our construction programs. Uh, uh, the, the 2018 uh, budget for VA included a, an infrastructure plus up. Uh, we have the same plus up in our budget for 2019. So I wanted to touch on that and let you know the impact uh, to our construction programs under 50 million on that. And the two programs I'll be talking about is our minor construction program, as well as our non-recurring maintenance program. Uh, I'll also give you some points of contact. Uh, uh, if you haven't met any of them, we have a lot of points of contact here uh, at the conference this week with the uh, NVSBE. Uh, they were given presentations yesterday and today uh, about their specific needs. And I hope you had a chance to uh, connect with them. Uh, if not, possibly you could do that uh, afterwards uh, or tomorrow. And also want to just close with a, a couple quick comments on uh, a grant program that is run through VHA with, uh, with the states, uh, state governments, uh, state veterans home construction grant program, which also has a lot of activity, uh, which may have some opportunities uh, for you as well. <clears throat> uh, quickly uh, go over and give you a snapshot of uh, how we're are, uh, in, the, in the Department of Veterans Affairs, our procurement relationships uh, work. Uh, uh, at the kind of the top left, we have the secretary, deputy secretary, and, and on the right side is uh, uh, co construction and facilities management and uh, office acquisitions. That's uh, at the department level. And then under the deputy secretary and, and secretary, we have the administrations, one of those being Veterans Health Administration. Our procurement office in Veterans Health Administration uh, generally executes the majority of our minor construction 
and NRM construction needs. We also utilize uh, some of the agencies as well, uh, NAFAC, uh, Corps of Engineers, uh, and others at, at times. Uh, so within, uh, th this is just kind of the hierarchy relationship within uh, a VHA uh, under the Undersecretary uh, for Health. And uh, within, within the VA, uh, VHA, we have uh, a number of, a number of, uh, I'll show you a map here sooner than later, a number of uh, networks, 18 of them, and uh, we have representatives from, from them here uh, at the conference, and they can uh, tell you a little bit more about their requirements as well. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of our healthcare delivery scope. Uh, we are the largest healthcare system in the United States, uh, providing care to over 1,200 uh, healthcare facilities that includes 180 uh, inpatient facilities as well as more than 1,000 outpatient facilities of varying uh, complexity. Uh, we treat and provide health care to more than 9 million veterans each year, and we employ over 25,000 physicians and 90, over 94,000 nurses. And here's the map that I was referring to. Uh, so we have uh, 18 networks. Uh, we call them vis VISNs, or Veterans Integrated Service Networks, uh, and they're specifically managing those uh, health care facilities in, in those geographic locations. And so our capital asset managers and chief engineers located in, in those uh, networks um, uh, drive the requirements and uh, uh, publish the ex execution requirements for, for the minor and NRM program. Quick summary of our uh, capital portfolio, uh, our VHA owned assets, uh, over 5,000 buildings, uh, a majority, almost uh, half of those are uh, historic. Uh, and we have uh, over 150 million gross square feet of space uh, and with an average age of over 50 years uh, uh, as far as the buildings. And those of you who may do uh, healthcare construction in the private sector know that the private sector turns over their, their facilities in, in you know, about 15 years. They're doing significant renovations or building new. Uh, we tend to squeeze as much juice as we can out of our facilities and uh, thus the need for a lot of uh, non-recurring maintenance and, and improvements and, and uh, additions to our facilities. Uh, we also have uh, a number of lease facilities. Uh, I know there were some presentations earlier in the conference on our leasing programs. Uh, we have over 1,600 leases uh, uh, encompassing more than 19 million net usable square feet of space. Uh, the infrastructure plus up that I referenced. So, uh, with our F FY18 budget, uh, we received a plus up funding in our construction programs on top of our normal uh, budget allotments. Uh, so in FY18, we received a total of $2 billion additional uh, split between the non-recurring maintenance program, minor construction program, and the state veterans home construction grant program. Uh, the, the plus up funding is available to, until expended, so we have a multi-year spend plan uh, that we're working those uh, projects for. Uh, many of those include designs one year, construction the following year, and I'll tell you a little bit about how that affects uh, our requirements of what we project uh, in, in the programs. And then in 2019, we're expecting another uh, uh, 900, or we have another 950 million uh, split between the NRM and minor construction programs on top of our normal budget. So talk about minor construction program. Uh, these projects are typically uh, additions or, uh, of, of our existing facilities. Uh, they, they encompass uh, anything from adding space for parking garage structures to uh, expanding operating room suites, expanding emergency departments. Uh, these projects uh, can go up to $20 million in uh, total project costs. So that covers the design and construction of the project. Uh, if you recall, uh, last year when we presented, our, that threshold was at 10 million. Uh, we recently got that in increase through the VA Mission Act of 2018, which was passed this summer. So the threshold bumped it up to uh, 20 million. Uh, with the with the forecasting opportunities, uh, we we expect 1.2 billion available in this program over the next two years, 19 and 20. Uh, and again, that relates to how we 
uh, uh, forecast the spend plan of that infrastructure plus of funding that's, that carries over, over multiple years. And a few shots of some typical minor construction projects, uh, imaging center uh, addition in Cincinnati, uh, surgical suite expansion in Minneapolis, uh, behavioral health sciences building in Erie, Pennsylvania, a new parking structure in Portland, Oregon, uh, research building in Baltimore. And this is kind of a, a snapshot of uh, where, where the funding is in the minor program. So by, net, by our network office uh, offices, uh, the 18 offices, each, each of the slices of the pie depicts that. So we're, we're planning for, in FY19, 69 individual design awards in this program. Uh, you can see it's kind of evenly split between all 18 of uh, the network offices. And uh, also in 19, we're expecting about 43 individual construction awards uh, with Vision 6, Vision 8 having, or I'm sorry, Vision 10 uh, having uh, kind of the majority there uh, as far as the numbers. Switching over to our non-recurring maintenance program, uh, these, these uh, projects typically fix what we own, fix what we have uh, doing our typical maintenance projects. Uh, they also include uh, replacement uh, utility systems projects, uh, such as replacement boiler plants, uh, air conditioning plants, chiller plants. Uh, also a lot of energy projects that uh, add new technologies such as uh, combined heat and power plants that, that we pr typically didn't have uh, at, at the facility. Uh, these projects uh, go anywhere from 25,000 up to uh, two million dollars, uh, ten million dollars, sorry, twenty million dollars in total costs. Uh, utility projects can go over that threshold. Uh, so uh, if we're doing a replacement boiler plant, typically they may exceed uh, the twenty million threshold as well. Uh, these funding requir—I mean, these uh, re uh, project requirements are again uh, uh, programmed and executed by our network offices. Uh, in 2019, we're forecasting almost $3 billion in, in construction awards uh, and design awards through uh, this program. Some typical NRM projects for us. Some, uh, we do a lot of uh, high-cost, high-tech medical equipment site prep projects, such as, uh, such as these two projects for an, uh, a, a rad floor or a room, a uh, new MRI suite. Uh, this one's a linear accelerator site prep for radiation oncology clinic in Bay Pines. Uh, boiler plant replacement, Columbia. Uh, renovation for women's health care clinic in uh, Sacramento. And this is the kind of project distribution by NRM awards. Uh, this having a lot of smaller projects, uh, non-recurring maintenance program has a larger number of projects. We're, we're expecting a combined uh, uh, design and construction awards over almost 1,600 projects in FY19. Uh, so this kind of shows you the, the geographic split of those. How to market with the VA. Uh, typically, uh, the points of contact. Uh, uh, one thing I didn't mention a little bit about are, are energy projects, uh, green energy projects. Uh, uh, points of contact for those projects typically come out of our Cleveland uh, 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 contracting office, the Program Contracting Activity Central, PCAC, and they're located, as I said, in Cleveland, Ohio. Richard Damon is our point of contact. There's a uh, phone number there for him and his uh, email address. And these are the uh, 18 capital asset managers, uh, points of contact, email, and phone numbers. And most of those individuals are here this week. And like I said, I hope you've had a chance to connect with them uh, yesterday, today, and uh, if not, tomorrow. And they can go over some specific uh, construction needs that they're forecasting uh, as far as their priorities over the next few years. And uh, a quick touch on the State Veterans Home Construction Grant Program. Uh, this, again, is a, is, a, is a grant program with the states, uh, with state governments. Uh, run through the VA. The VA provides uh, typically 65% uh, reimbursement of a, of, a, of a project to the state. The state funds the remaining 
uh, the, the, this program is, uh, is regulated, and it gives you the references where it's regulated. In FY19, uh, our budget is uh, 150 million for the program, but we received a great plus up in uh, FY18 uh, that brought that upwards of uh, 700 million and uh, really funded a lot of backlog construction grant programs throughout the country. Uh, on this final slide, uh, on, on the right side of the uh, slide gives you uh, the, the state locations where lo some of the larger uh, replacement and new construction projects for the state veterans home uh, are. Uh, so if you, if you look at like Illinois, Massachusetts, uh, Michigan, those are some states, North Carolina and Virginia have some uh, uh, multiple projects or some larger projects that may be some opportunities for you to team up with or, or, or take on uh, at the state government level. And with that, I'll uh, transition over to Dennis. Thanks, Ed. It's, uh, it's really a privilege for me to, to follow Ed. It's uh, important that uh, we, we saw that he came here and we had this opportunity to bring all of the VA, uh, the, the Vision Network uh, directors out here, or, or capital asset engineers, because this is the Small Business Conference, and that is one of the greatest opportunities for small businesses to participate in the VA's construction program is through uh, Ed's program. And then in the major construction program, which is the larger projects, we look at uh, uh, contractors that have come through that program, gained that experience, and are ready to step up and prime some of our new projects or be substantial subcontractors on our next program. Now, <clears throat> I am a construction manager, and it is my job to bring us in on time here. So we are going to blow through some information that Ed's partially covered, and you've heard from many of my my colleagues uh, from the VA speak on already. So uh, you, we have our mission and vision. Uh, we are organized. <laughs> this, is, this is a snapshot picture of, uh, of the difference in the enterprise. Ed's slide showed you what VHA owns. This includes both VBA and our cemeteries, national NCA uh, uh, group. Uh, so we've, we've gone through that. Uh, we design the major projects. We typically uh, now partner with the Corps of Engineers for those over 100 million, so we self-execute uh, or self-contract uh, and, and manage uh, the ones between 20 and uh, 100 right now. So here's the, here's the meat of my presentation. It's uh, what, what projects we have out there. For uh, these projects in the, the vertical construction opportunities, you've seen a lot of these before with the Corps of Engineers presentations because we are partnered with a significant number of these projects with the Corps. So you've got Long Beach where we've got a new community living center coming out. You've got Reno, which is a, a, a seismic renovation basically and new clinic building. And that one, I understand, hit the streets this morning with its RFP. Uh, San Diego Spinal Injury and Community Living Center, Canandaigua Phase 2. We awarded Canandaigua Phase 1 last year, so we're ready to move on with Phase 2. Uh, those projects that I mentioned so far are all uh, Corps of Engineers-led uh, projects for the design and construction execution. Uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, Renovate Building 1. This is a re... re uh, a re-procurement of a piece where we got into some it's extreme, extreme structural uh, uh, differing site conditions, and so we took a design build project that we had out there and uh, decided that it made more sense to take it back in-house, and so you'll see different pieces coming out in the future. Dallas Long-Term uh, Spinal Cord Injury Center uh, is coming out on the, the street this year. St. Louis uh, JB, Jefferson Barracks, is a Another piece of a multi-phase project there. A lot of these uh, projects that we have that, that approach uh, 500, 600 million dollars have been done in multiple phases so that we could uh, continue to operate the medical center while we uh, constructed and improved their facilities. And then uh, the, the Louisville project, it shows the, the full ex uh, budget that we've, we've seen out there. Uh, it is. We are in, in uh, we have a lawsuit uh, against us for uh, not following the NEPA process uh, with the local neighborhood. Uh, we expect that to be resolved, but by the time it gets resolved, uh, hopefully we'll see some results in the FY20 budget that may, may uh, 
help us re uh, relook at how we procure that project because uh, we won't have to do it in phases because we uh, may actually end up with all the money and be able to do it as, as one big project, which is the way we'd all like to see it done. Now I want to talk, talk about um, a new opportunity we have coming up. Uh, the Congress talked to us last year, a little bit the year before, about all the extremely high-risk seismic uh, deficient buildings we have and all the high-risk uh, seismic deficient buildings we have. And we made an agreement with uh, <clears throat> some of the, the congressional staffers, and there was a, a budget request uh, built and put in for about 300 or 400 million dollars, depending on which which house, uh, which which part of the, the 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 Congress worked on it. And we were all prepared to go forward with this uh, plan for about three to 400 uh, million dollars worth of money coming into us to take care of seismic programs or, or seismic projects. And lo and behold, uh, Congress says, well, wait a minute, if all these things are high risk and extremely high risk, and you've got about a $7 billion backlog of these projects, why don't you take an extra $750 million and go, go spend it? So we ended up with uh, a program worth uh, about 1 .1, a little over $1.1 billion uh, for seismic programs. And like you've heard from everybody else, Congress is reminding us that these are, pro these are projects and buildings that are at risk. Spend the money, get them fixed. So these are just a, a few of the projects that we expect to come right out of the gate. One of the things about this fund is it can be used to, to round out some of the funding of some of our other major projects, provided they meet the definition of it has to be a, seismically, a seismic project and it has to correct the seismic deficiencies. So we, American Lake was, a, it was an appropriated project, an authorized project that we were going through multiple phases on. Uh, the fund allows us now to take a part of that fund and fund uh, some more pieces of that project. The seismic fund, and this is the, for us the beauty of this fund, is that it is limited in what we can do with it in that it has to be a seismic project. It has to be building by building. We can't do entire campuses. We can't replace a hospital. We can't, we can't do anything that would complicate the immediate correction of deficiencies. We can do repair by replacement, which is a lot of what you're going to see out on these projects. So instead of the, the money to, to repair it, which uh, can take sometimes five, six years with all the hopscotch moves you have to do to create space, we can repair by replacement provided we tear down the old one. And we don't grow the new space by more than 10%, and the same programs go back into the same, into the replacement facility. Uh, so Congress has given us this new authority and this new fund. We're anxious to, to get it out there and get it used. Uh, we are going to be seeing more and more design built in this program because it's the only way we're going to get this money spent efficiently and get our projects built and constructed. So this was a, a big, big win for uh, the VA, and we are very happy to see it. And I'm also happy to remind you all that not all the seismic zones are on the West Coast. So it, there is uh, money in the, in the central part of the United States and the eastern part of the United States under this program. Um, I just want to cover real quick the, the uh, VA's unique small business uh, goal, which says that we go to service disabled veteran owned small business first, and then to veteran owned small businesses, and then we look at the rest of the FAR uh, rankings for how we go to small business. So, uh, we are now seeing more and more vet service disabled veteran owned small businesses form up, um, get certified, do work, get bonding capacity, and be able to actually perform our work. So we're very happy about that. We are the Department of Veterans Affairs. We are very happy to be supporting our veteran uh, uh, firms out there. As long as there are two or more of them, we will set the project aside and allow them to, to uh, compete for the project uh, within that set-aside group. Uh, these are some websites where you can check out our uh, uh, forecast and, uh, again, how to do business with the VA. And so now we'll turn it back over to Tom for questions. Tom, my brother. Oh, Bill, sorry. It's okay. I called Bob Ed, so we're, we're even. <laughs> okay. Hey, how about a round of applause?
So um, we were open for questions. I'm not going to force any questions because these guys covered everything I wanted to know. Does anybody have any questions? 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 Right here. Hold on. He's running with that microphone, so there we go. Thank you. I'm uh, Marshall Contino from Concourse Federal Group. A uh, question for a VA. So for the seismic um, upgrades, you got existing IDIQs and most of those visions. We use those IDIQs to run that work through them. We will use any vehicle we can put our hands on that gets us efficient and effective spend of the money. So uh, we will be looking at what available contracts out there. We're not going to recontract and, and create a new family of or contracts just to do the program. And in fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're able to reach across some agency lines and use other, some, of the, some other vehicles that other people have currently available. Thank you. Any others? Again, as uh, you know, we're right on time anyway. We're supposed to end at 4.30. Um, again, all these presentations are going to be online. If you didn't get uh, signed in, please get your badge scanned. And uh, Bob, Tom, Ed, Dennis, thank you very much.